is Harriet Harvey Horn. I'm very pleased to be here at this amazing event, the TEDx Saratoga High School event, Creativity Amidst Chaos, and very pleased to be invited here to address you about the climate crisis uh, in a talk I've entitled 2021 Climate Reality, Climate Possibilities. So I am going to screen share very quickly. Let me start here. Thank you for your patience with that. So um, I'll tell you a little bit first about the organization I'm part of, the Climate Reality Project. It was started in 2006 by former Vice President and Nobel Laureate Al Gore to create a global grassroots network of people mobilized around climate action. In particular, the Climate Reality Leadership Corps that I'm part of is a group of trained people personally trained by Mr. Gore to present his very carefully vetted facts about the climate crisis and the solutions that are available. Nowadays, there are 33,000 people like me around the world that were trained by Mr. Gore in 170 countries. So the organization's uh, impact is really increasing. So this title, I cannot love this title more for uh, how it uh, pertains to the climate crisis, creativity amidst chaos. You know, there's plenty of chaos with the climate crisis, but what I think is really uh, important about this title is this word amidst, because that's what we have to deal with now is multiple crises at the same time. We have a justice crisis, we have a democracy crisis, we have a health crisis with the pandemic, and we have a climate crisis that is waiting for no one. So our challenge as a society and as human beings is dealing with these multiple crises at the same time, because none will wait for the others. So let's start here uh, with this beautiful view of our home. Um, this was taken by the astronauts in the final Apollo mission in 1972. And it was the first time we ever really got to see our home fully illuminated and see how connected we all are on this one small planet in space. So the climate reality presentation seeks to answer three basic questions. First, must we change? This is kind of the chaos part of the picture. This is the impacts and the science and what's really happening. Um, but there's good news coming. So hang in there because then we'll be talking about can we change and all the exciting solutions, the creation part of this story. What can we create in the way of a world for ourselves? And then will we change? Will we take up that challenge? So first, must we change? Scientists have been telling us for decades that we need to change. Now Mother Earth is telling us. So let's look at what's going on. This is a photograph of our atmosphere from the side. And if you look at it standing on the ground looking up, it looks like it's this infinite space of blue that just goes on forever. But in reality, it is this wafer thin shell. If the Earth were an apple, the atmosphere would be the equivalent of the width of the apple's skin, sustaining all life. And each day we're spewing 110 million tons of man-made global warming pollution into that thin shell as if it were an open sewer. So here's what is happening. Solar radiation comes to the earth in the form of light and it warms the earth and then gets re-radiated re out in the form of infrared waves. Some of that goes out into space. Some of it is trapped in the atmosphere and warms it. This is actually a good thing because that is what has created a stable climate on earth for life to form and to flourish. But when more and more of that heat gets trapped, then it, um, we get excess warming and that is very dangerous. So a lot of people kind of ask this question sometimes, isn't this just part of a natural cycle? Scientists have looked at this. They went back 800,000 years looking at little air bubbles in ice cores, said how much carbon is in there. And they indeed did discover 800,000 years. We've had this variation between 180 and 300 parts per million due to volcanic activity, solar flares, et cetera. So there is that natural cycle. And when they tracked temperature, they found that as we would expect from the greenhouse effect, temperature has tracked with carbon concentration. But whenever we look at where we are today, we actually, when we ask that question, is it part of a natural cycle? Well, no, it's not, because we're at 415 parts per million, well beyond anything that could ever be remotely considered considered a natural cycle. This is due to man-made activity, no question, particularly given what we know about greenhouse gases and what they can do for warming. So 
So here's a resource. Anytime you get one of those bizarre questions making you wonder whether we need to do anything, just go check out Skeptical Science and you can get some really good answers. Uh, it's a very credible site. So what are the sources of greenhouse gases? There are lots of them. We have industrial agriculture. We have permafrost that's melting. We have deforestation and, and crop burning. But what we're really going to focus on is the number one contributor, which is the burning of, of fossil fuels. And as you can see, since 1950, it has taken off dramatically. Last year, we had about an 8% decrease, which kind of gives us a jump start on where we need to be in the next nine years to really dramatically draw down all of um, our emissions. Of course, we had to shut down the economy to do that. We need to find other ways, and there are solutions. We'll get to that. So as we would expect from the greenhouse effect, all those gases accumulating in the atmosphere have made the temperature, the air temperature go up. 2020 was tied 2016 for the hottest year ever. 19 of the 20 hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2001. And this slide needs to be updated. If it were uh, updated, it would say the hottest of all have been the last six, because now we know that 2020 was just as hot as 2016. Across the country, we're really starting to experience extreme heat. Miami and Phoenix both experienced their hottest months ever in July. In California, back in August and September, record temperatures as we experienced those wildfires. And of course, Death Valley, the hottest temperature ever recorded, 130 degrees. This is happening elsewhere in the world, all over the world. These record temperatures are being recorded. So the Earth is covered 71% with water and the oceans are actually doing us a little bit of a favor. 93% of the extra heat trapped by uh, global warming pollution goes into our oceans. And you would say out of sight, out of mind, but not really because as the air warms and the oceans warm, that has impacts. Um, and of course here are, this is how the ocean temperatures have gone up and we expect 2020 to have been the hottest. So the hydrological cycle, this cycle of evaporation and water flowing back into the system um, is amplified by the effects of hotter temperatures in the air and in the water. More water evaporates into hotter air, then it causes these enormous precipitation events, either hurricanes, typhoons, major floods, um, and rainstorms, and then when that flows back out into the ocean, it creates mudslides and floods. Uh, this year we experienced a record hurricane season, the highest number of named storms ever. Rare tandem storms, Marco and Laura, uh, caused all sorts of destruction in the Caribbean. Uh, in the southern region of India, the Sundarbans were um, experienced cyclone Amphan, and they had a million people migrate inland when they returned back basically all of their livelihoods and homes were completely gone. And in the time of, of COVID, these types of mass migrations really get complicated. Um, this is as good a time as any mentioned that the greatest effects of all attacks on the environment are suffered by the poorest, according to the Pope in his 2015 encyclical. When those wetter storms come over land, they cause these phenomena called rain bombs that we are seeing more and more frequently. In the United States, there have been 17 one in a thousand year downpour events in the last 10 years. That's 17 one in a thousand events in 10 years. And the Midwest was particularly devastated in 2019 where $20 billion of damage was caused by flooding, $6 billion in handouts and 20 million acres of land were preventing from being um, planted. So it was devastating to our Midwestern farmers. That same extra heat that evaporates more water from the ocean causing bigger downpours and floods pulls more moisture from the soil causing these longer and deeper droughts that we're actually experiencing now in California. Last summer, groundwater levels in Europe were very low. And in fact, in the Czech Republic, they experienced a one in one 500 year drought. This is one of India's uh, six largest city, Chennai's lakes. They almost ran out of water in 2019, um, and these water shortages are going to be more and more impactful. It's also going to impact these droughts and uh, extreme weather events and heat are doing a number on food supply as well. So as we know here in California, hotter years have more fires and they do track one to one. 
this last year was just horrific. For weeks and weeks, we experienced these horrible fires. And of course, this photograph really captures it all, the multiple crises at once, the pandemic and the wildfires. Fire season is now 105 days longer in the West than it was in 70, 1970. And it's not just the West. In Florida, a thousand people were evacuated in May because of wildfires there. And of course, we saw the devastating bushfires in Australia earlier this year. It's happening all over the world. So worldwide extreme weather catastrophes are on the rise in all categories, extreme temperatures, droughts, fires, floods, mudslides, and storms. Let's take a look now though at the poles. This was a glacier in 1935 and what it looks like today. The ice sheet in Greenland, Ice is melting four times faster than originally thought and more is melting from the permanent ice sheet than from glaciers now. The same thing is happening with these land-based ice masses in the Antarctic. And when land-based ice masses start to melt, we have sea level rise as a result. The top 10 cities at risk by assets in the world, Miami heads that list uh, for sea level rise risk and uh, New York is third. When you look by population, Southeast Asian cities head the list, but Miami also makes that list as well. Sea level rise is how this octopus ended up in a parking garage on a sunny day. Sunny day flooding is happening on a regular basis now as a result of sea level rise. Here's a time progression for the Bay Area with two degrees C of warming. We could expect both of our uh, major airports to be inundated as well as some of our major freeways and populated areas along the bay. Pacific Islanders are being faced with a real problem of having to migrate. Kiribati is the first nation to actually buy land in another country uh, so its immigrants will have a way, its residents will have a place to go. And this is a security risk. For years, the U.S. Department of Defense has warned that climate change will likely lead to food and water shortages, pandemic disease, refugee disputes over refugees and destruction by natural disasters around the world. And we have seen mass migrations from Syria and from other regions where people were just no longer able to um, have a way of life. The world could see up to a billion climate uh, migrants. Climate change is also a medical emergency. As the climate warms north and south of the equator, more and more of these mosquito-borne disease diseases are being transmitted. We're seeing things like Zika and dengue that we never saw before, and that will continue to happen as things warm. As the climate changes and we move further into Earth's remaining wild places, five new infectious diseases are emerging on average each year. And 75% of all new emerging infectious diseases are zoonotic, meaning they're transmitted from animals into humans like COVID was. Nine million people die a year from ambient air pollution. And of course, air pollution worsens uh, the impacts of the COVID um, uh, sickness. And then what biologists say may be the single largest impact, we're now risk, at risk of losing up to 50% of all land-based species in this century, disrupting our natural ecosystem. So we've covered some of the impacts, not all of them here, but for years, these impacts are reason that the IMF has warned that the, it is climate change is the number one threat to the global economy. So must we change? Hopefully you're agreeing with me that yes, we must. Can we change? Let's look at this creativity side of the equation that we can take care of in the midst of this crisis. We have solutions at hand. First, let's look at the energy sector. We'll look at wind first. In 2000, they predicted worldwide wind capacity would reach 30 gigawatts by 2010. In reality, by 2019, that goal was exceeded by 22 times and global wind energy is taking off exponentially. Globally, wind could supply worldwide electricity consumption 40 times over, so there's plenty of capacity there. We just need to tap into it. There's even a better story with solar energy. In 2002, they predicted the solar energy market would grow one gigawatt per year by 2010. In reality, that goal was exceeded by 17 times, and by 2019, it was exceeded by 121 times. So we see an even steeper adoption curve with solar PV, which is really, really exciting. Enough solar energy reaches Earth every hour to fill all the world's energy needs for a full year. So there's plenty of solar energy out there. We just need to tap into it. Renewable energy is now the cheapest form of energy to deploy. 
So it, the wind doesn't always blow, the sun doesn't always shine. So you must have so storage capacity to complement any sort of renewable energy system. And we do expect a dramatic increase in solar storage capacity. Uh, and there are a lot of exciting new technologies that will make that more uh, affordable. Now let's look at transportation. All the major auto manufacturers are going to electric vehicles. GM has announced they will never, they will no longer make internal combustion engines after 2025. So there is a, a great trend in auto manufacturing and we're seeing more and more electric cars on the road. Half of the world's buses will be electric by 2025. So there are great things happening there, better solutions across the board. I didn't get to get into all of the solutions. Regenerative agriculture also presents great opportunities to sequester carbon and improve, improve the quality of our crops. There's a lot going on and all of these things are even advantageous from an economic standpoint, creating jobs. There is really no reason. We just need that willpower. So we can change. Will we change? So the Paris Agreement, in 2015, every nation in the world agreed to work together to get to net zero by mid-century. The US withdrew in November, but we're back in just a few months later. So that's the, exactly the kind of leadership we need around the world. We can be very proud of being here in California, mandating very aggressive targets for clean energy, uh, leading the world with the fifth largest economy showing that we can do this. Over 240 global companies have made a commitment to go renewable. You might recognize some there. So here we are on the cusp of a change amidst chaos, creativity. We can create the world we need. Be the change you wanna see. Get an EV, walk or bike, or take mass transit if you can. Opt into 100% renewable electricity from your clean energy supplier. Silicon Valley Clean Energy is the one here in the South Bay. Join or follow a climate organization like Climate Reality, Sierra Club 350, Sunrise. A great way to stay informed and to get involved if you want to. Go plant-based go plant uh, or go Meatless Mondays. Do, do what you can there. Consume less, particularly single-use objects in plastic for sure advocate our government leaders need to hear from us that this is a priority for us we understand the threat it is to humanity and join young people around the world who are raising their voices their and use they're using their votes their choices as well to fight for their future their community and their world use your voice your vote your choices speak truth to power like your world depends on it because your world does depend on it. Thank you so much for your time today.